What is that intro? Have Blood Nemesis, welcome. Lovely fangirl, how are you? Have you not seen my intro? I've had that for a while, man. I made that. That's my, uh, that, that actually, I'm very proud of that. That was a fun intro to make. It's at the beginning of every stream. You know, ramp it up, man, off to the races, but there's no finish line, you know what I mean? That looks fancy, thank you, man. I made it, I made it all fancy like. Today we're uh, doing something a little bit different. We're not playing a video game, at least not yet. Depends on how we uh, how we get on. So today we are going to get into some voice meter, some voice meter. But before we do that, let's uh, let's move that out of the way for now. Before we get into voice meter, I just want to kind of give everybody a little time a to get in here. B to kind of get something off my chest because I love doing that. Oh, so to, yes, you got Jolty back. Had to get your Jolty on back. Yeah, you know what? I had to fix something a while back. And when I did it, apparently everybody's kind of like reset to a rando. And I apologize. But you didn't lose ones that you already had. So this morning I had a bit of a scare. My wife's at work. She's a teacher. And... um. She comes home unexpectedly. As long as you don't lose, it's fine. Yeah, there you go. Um, brings my son home and like he's sick as a dog. He's got like the severe cold symptoms, like throat hurts, head hurts, like all of the above. And you know where this is going, obviously. And all of a sudden, I, I go drop her off because we're operating on one vehicle right now. Uh, day day was good until this happened. This this particular story, this particular example. My son had to go to the pediatrician, so I took him to the pediatrician, and we had to do his COVID test this morning. And he is nine years old, and he was scared out of his mind. And as soon as they pulled the stupid Q-tip out of the little sanitary seal that they have it in, he about shit his pants. He's like, "You're gonna stick what in the wear now?" That thing ain't going up my nose like he was freaking out. And he's brave as hell, but like he didn't understand that only the little bit of the end had to go in. But he was like, what happens if I get COVID? What am I going to do? I'm like, oh my God, man, this is a scary place to be right now. And thank goodness he does not have COVID. He tested negative for it. But Jesus Christ, man, that shit was scary as hell. Like, watching him fear for his life in that particular moment. He's nine. He is nine years old. And he had that fear. He should not have that fear at nine years old. Should not have that fear whatsoever. So that was that was how I started off the day. Almost had to cancel the stream today because of that. It would have not have been fun. But, you know, such is life. We deal with the curveballs positive to hear it is negative yes it is positive to hear it is negative that's another thing he had to explain to him like how the testing works like negative is a good thing he's like no but i thought negative was bad <laughs> it's funny i mean all in all it's a good lesson for him to like really understand how important it is to wash your hands and like listen to us a little bit more about staying away from other people as much as you can especially when you don't know where they've been you know, he goes to public school, so it's tough. Kids are kids. They're going to do whatever the hell they want. 
And they definitely are going to do whatever the hell they want, whenever the hell they want to do it. Like my youngest, who is six, she don't have a damn care in the world. You tell her she's going to get COVID, she's like, I'll fucking punch COVID right in the face. I do what I want. That's my youngest. She's the boss. Anywho, that's my, had to get that off my chest. That's how my morning went. So let's get into some voice meter, shall we? So today we are going to do some voice meter stuff. So for, for now, we're going to run on this until I have a victim. Until I have a victim, somebody who needs some setting up. Somebody who needs help or decided they wanted to try it. I know that uh, Manta said he kind of just gave up on it and he's willing to give it another go. I definitely am willing to help. But so I kind of want to give an overview of what the hell voice meter is and why streamers should consider using it. It looks scary, especially if you don't know what audio is. So I'm going to try and break this down into like the simplest possible form, like the simplest possible form. You like food, Nemesis. I know you like food. You always talk about food and you make me hungry. Crispy dad, what is audio, right? Huh? I'm in the hospital. It's fun. Oh, no good. Oh, good morning. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to talk about food for a minute. Your body needs food. You get hungry. You go get food. Sure. I like food. And how am I making you hungry? You always make me fun hungry when you talk about pizza. I don't know why, but pizza is my favorite food. And you, whenever you're here, mention that you're going to get pizza for some odd reason. I don't know why, but I get hungry. I don't know. It's like one of my first memories of you <laughs> It's telling me you're going to go get some pizza. Now, now you want to have pizza. I'm sorry, buddy. All right. So let's talk about pizza. What makes a good pizza? You got to have dough, right? All right. So you got dough. All right. Now I'm from the U.S. So in the U.S., we make pizza very differently from where other areas of the world might make it. I know in Italy, pizza in the U.S. doesn't exist. It's not even close. But in U.S., pizza is... Plain and simple, a flat piece of bread with a little bit of tomato sauce on it, spread evenly out. You take mozzarella cheese, you put that on top. So now we're up to three ingredients, right? Doctor's looking at me crazy because she thinks I'm on the phone with an old man. I'm going to let her keep wondering. That's a good quote. I like that. <laughs> so now we got, okay, we got bread, we got sauce, we got cheese. And then you can put other things on top. You can put more types of cheese. You can put cheddar cheese. You can put anything you want flatbread tomato sauce is common yes very very common but you can put pepperoni you can put sausage you can put pineapple and ham that's what makes it different right that's what makes the the pizza unique to some people that's what makes some people like some pizza you love it some pizza are like i'm not touching that that's what makes it different you prefer ham and salami cool i will never eat a ham and salami pizza i don't know why i'll eat pepperoni Sausage, pepperoni, bacon, too much. Like, that's just a little too much salt for me. You know what I mean? Like, spaghetti, spaghetti bolognese sauce and more cheese. Yeah. Cheese, 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 cheese. Love the cheese. Where am I going with this? Why, why is this the topic of conversation? Because that is audio. Audio is tons of ingredients. It's tons of different ingredients. Sounds. Microphone background music, game audio, desktop audio, sound effects that you may want to layer on top. All of these different ingredients eventually have to come together at some point, and that's where you want to mix them up. And sometimes you need a little bit more of one ingredient than the rest of them. You don't all you don't put equal parts of everything on top of the pizza. You don't put five ounces of pepperoni, five ounces of cheese, five ounces of dough. No, there's a different measurement for each. That's where voice meter is compared. Voice meter is the measuring tool that you use for all of your sounds as a composer or a streamer or whatever you want to call yourself, content creator or fiddler, game player, human being, whatever. That's voice meter. It is the measuring tool that allows you to measure and control the different ingredients or sounds that are going in and out of different areas of your computer digitally. That's it. In simpler form, it's a measuring spoon. 
The simplest analogy I can give you is it's a measuring spoon for a giant recipe. And it constantly measures and mixes different ingredients. That's what it does. So, grandma analogies aside, why did I tell you, why did I dumb it down? Because mixers are complex. Audio is complex. It's as complex as we make it. But it can be easy. All we need to do is relate it to something we know. Everybody knows food. We have to relate it to something we know. You look at this screen right in front of me, and it looks complex as hell. But it's only complex because I don't understand it. It's not complex because it's hard. If I understand it, it's not hard anymore, right? You know how to make a pizza because you've learned how, but when you didn't know how, it was probably complex to you. So here we go. I'm going to kind of give an overview of what you need to make a recipe of sound. Sound source, sound destination. Distance travel. That's it. That is a recipe for sound. Now you can have multiple sound sources. So you can have, <laughs> she's clueless, but this is cool. This is funny. I love that you're having like your whole little like sitcom moment in the hospital <laughs> thinks I'm the grandfather and blood nemesis just laughing. So you have sound source, sound destination, distance traveled. It's basically navigation, right? You can have more than one sound source. You can have sound from me banging my hand on a desk. Very loud. Sorry. You can have sound from the dogs upstairs. You can have sound from the nurse thinking that I'm a grandfather. All of these different things can make sounds. But what if you want to make one louder and one mute? You can do that. That's where you can use a tool like voice meter or any mixer and control it, right? But you have to know where it's coming in. You have to know where it's coming from. I heard you say for me banging my head on the desk was disappointed you <laughs> with your head. I said hand. I didn't say head. You heard head because you wanted me to bang my head on the desk. That's hilarious. So I just lost my train of thought because I can't, I have a hard time. I have a hard time not reading chat constantly and like stopping what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Oh my gosh. I really just lost my train of thought. I love it. You just threw me off guard. Blood nemesis, ladies and gentlemen, here you go. This is for you. I'm going to give you a big one just for you. Just for you. There it is. We are the Diversion Squad. There it is. Exclamation point. Join. Get in the raffle. All right. So you've got to have sound coming in and you have to have sound going out. You need to know where it's coming from. And you need to know where you want it to go. So if you have sound coming in, the computer Windows calls it desktop audio. That's a primary sound source for all of your computers. I'm going to put this away for a second and I'm going to come down to the bottom of my screen here. I'm going to switch something up here. And bye bye. All right. <clears throat> so now you can kind of see most of us know and are familiar with this, right? The little sound here, this sound icon. If you right click it, you can open sound settings and it'll bring you over to this thing right here. So without getting too complex, your desktop audio's default here is probably like real tech or something crazy, something silly like that, that Microsoft likes to call it. Don't worry so much about that right now. But just know that it's there. Just know that it's there. We're, we can change all of that a million times. And Windows likes to manipulate a lot of shit. So it, this is where you change it. However, this other window that I have open, if you scroll down on this panel here, sound control panel, that opens this window. And I like to, when setting up voice meter, you're going to leave this window open. You're going to leave this window open for a little while until you can kind of understand what it's doing. But the way that Windows controls your sound is you have playback. That's your default audio playing back. So desktop audio will come out. Where is it? Real tech digital output. That's your default. When you buy a computer, it's going to come out of that one. She thinks I'm crazy because I'm not talking. There it is. Recording. If you have a microphone at all plugged into your computer, it'll be shown on this tab. So I have a microphone somewhere in here. There it is. 
my Yeti Nano, my infamous Yeti Nano. I have a lot of other things that you see. We're not going to discuss them just yet, but that's where it'll show up. Sounds, default sound effects. So sound sources, right? And communications. So you can, you can tell this to do nothing. You can tell it to reduce the volume of other sounds by 80%. This is for communications like Skype, Discord, the infamous Yeti. Finally, someone has seen it. I caught it. I caught it. However, the communications piece, you're going to want to know that it's there because you probably will have to m manipulate this depending upon what applications you use. But for the purposes of this tutorial, just know that it's there. Just know that it's there. We're going to focus on these two tabs, mostly playback and recording. Playback. Recording. With me so far? Good. Good, 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 good. All right. So now... I'm going to pull back up my voice meter. And this is assuming that we've already installed a version of voice meter. And there's three versions of voice meter. They're all donationware, and they're all the same. Believe it or not, they're all the same. There's the voice meter, voice meter banana and voice meter potato. They're all the same. I promise you, I'm not lying. Voice meter is essentially, I'm going to kind of make, I'm going to make this work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and force this to so you can see. Voice meter is these two things. The things that you now see on the right side of my screen. That left channel. The left two channels there. And then you have these little three sections now on the right. Where it says desktop, comms, and music. It's output. It's all into one though. Now voice meter banana has an additional section here. And voice meter potato has five total sections. Now what are these sections? These are... Hardware inputs or sound sources, sound inputs. That's where the audio is coming from. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I just read what you wrote. That is hilarious. So the thing to know about this is these can change. You can set these to whatever source you want. And I'll show you how to do that in just a, just a little bit. But I want to kind of explain what voice meter is doing here so you can kind of understand the interface. On all versions of voice meter, you have audio sources or audio input. You also have to have the destination. Where is the audio going? Now, that's over here. On each version of voice meter, it's on the right-hand side. And it's out. Hardware out. Now, they also have virtual outputs. Now, what's a virtual output? Essentially, when you get voice meter, it comes with a invisible cable, an invisible audio cable that you can plug into anything you want software wise. So if you want to plug in your pretzel rocks app, you want to plug in your Spotify app, you want to plug in your Chrome browser, you can, so you can mute it and play everything else. How do you do that? Oh, we're going to get into that, but. You need to turn on hardware output. So we have to have speakers. We got to have something. And that's what these A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. This is the program basically knowing that the music or audio or sound is going somewhere. It's got to go somewhere. So here, A1 correlates with this column right here. Notice where my mouse cursor is going. Two, right there, all so on and so forth. They are labeled as such on the top. If you click on them, you have this huge list of like, oh my God, what the hell am I supposed to do with this list? Relax. Take it easy. <laughs> Don't worry so much. You see some things on this list like doubled up, like WDM. We're going to go down over headphones, AW90. That's what I'm wearing right now. But wait, why is this one the same? And then I have another version of it down here. Voice meter is very compatible. It has, you explain things. I'm just stupid because you're going over things. Still don't understand. I feel like my grandma trying to work a new phone. That's okay. I, I am doing this because I know that people give up on this application who have tried it. And I'm hoping that people will join that have tried it and installed it and want help setting it up so we can do some screen sharing in discord. I know I have a few people who said they would, but uh, no set time. So right now we're just doing some tutorials. But understand that 
this right here, these columns correlate with volume to my headphones. So now if I have music playing, it's going to be really loud. Hello, it's me, people. I give up on looking at getting back to it. Oh, you gave up on it. Yes. If you are looking at getting back to it, we can do that. Are you on a lunch break or, or are you available to like at, be at your computer? We can set it up now. You just let me know. These other uh, sliders here are the same. So you can have up to five hardware outputs and three virtual outputs. So three additional outputs that are not plugged into hardware. So not speakers. Yeah, at work, unfortunately. No worries, man. No worries. This isn't going to be the only workshop I do. I'm just doing this is the first. I did it on the fly. It was just a suggestion from a couple people. So I figured, hey, we're just going to do it. We're just going to do it on the fly. So the, the thing to know about the hardware outputs is the A11 output is actually really important. This one you want to be your main audio output. So if you always wear your headphones when you're playing on the computer, you want that to be your headphones. I'm going to sit in here and act like I know what you're talking about. That's cool. I appreciate it. Hopefully I can get it to a point where I'm teaching something of value to you. Same here. Blood Nemesis, I know you know some of this stuff. You've got to. Anything that's after A1 does not necessarily matter, but just know that A1 is kind of like the, I guess, what what do you call it? Like the lead rower on a rowing team. He's the one at the butt, head of the boat going stroke, stroke. Like that person is the captain. This particular channel has a little bit more responsibility, so it has to be the one that you use primarily. You never want to turn this one off. I've never used this, but some thingies I can understand. Thingies? We do call, I do call these thingies, thingies quite often, actually. Now, what are these three things in the middle? These thingies here, these are where we're going to send the virtual outputs. So these three sliders on the right, remember I said they represent virtual outputs. So we could send audio to speakers here or headphones here. But what if I wanted to send audio somewhere else, say like, I don't know, Discord or OBS or perhaps just a Zoom call or Skype call, something like that. You can do that. You can totally do that by using one of these virtual channels. So one, two, and three. This is B1. And the names are right here where my mouse is circling. B1, B2, B3. A1, two, three, four, five. So A1 through five and B1 through three. A1 through five. B1, B2, B3. Everything correlates with each other. Lots of buttons on the screen. Don't worry about all these buttons. You don't even need to know what half of them do at this point. Just know that know that A1 through 5 here correlates with A1 or sorry, 1 through 5 here correlates with 1 through 5 over here. 1 through 3 here correlates with 1 through 3 over here. So far, you're with me? Questions just asked. So now I want to show you the basic setup, the very basic bare bones, like what would you need to make this work? So the first thing we need to do is tell the computer that we want voice meter to control our audio. And the way in which we would want to do that is in this sound control panel. So what you're going to do is you come down to this sound uh, setting here and you're going to right click it, go to sound settings, which will open this window. And you can just simply choose from this, choose your output device. You can just choose voice meter input VB audio, voice meter input, voice meter VIO, which stands for virtual audio in out or VIO. I'll just reference it as VIO from here on out. There are three different virtual cables to connect these three channels. Desktop comms and music is VIO, AUX and VIO three. They are all in out cables. So one, two, three, B one, two, three, VIO, AUX, VIO three. Very, very simple to remember when you do it that way. VIO, VIO, AUX, VIO three. You can rename them if you want. I kept them the same just because I like everything to stay as default. So it's easy to come back to in instructions. But the instruction manual for this application and setting it up, it was very daunting, which is why I think a lot of people give up on it. Once, once you set that to VIO, you're going to want to choose your input device. Now, while you're testing everything out, you just need this to be set as your microphone. 
but you can change this to Vio after you've set everything up correctly. You can also change it to aux, kind of depending on, on the circumstances, but this is setting voice meter as controlling your audio for the whole computer. When you do this, Vio and Vio, so virtual in out, virtual in out, any application you have set to audio in default will just correlate to whatever your settings are here in voice meter. That just gives voice meter control of the audio for the whole computer. That's all that does, but it's a very important setting. The reason I have this other little white window open is because the one thing that Windows does, like right now you just saw the little drivers and updates thing pop up, is sometimes things reset to default in Windows after you update a driver or you do a Windows update and the sound updates will go back to default. What's up, Chunk? So sometimes you got to come back in here and reset the default. So just to kind of show you, it looks different, but it's the same thing. So voice meter input VIO. That's what my default is. Aux, that's number two. And three, Vio three is right here. Vio, Vio Aux, Vio three. Same on recording. Scroll all the way down on the recording tab. Vio, Vio Aux, and Vio three. Same thing. So if you click on it here, you can select it and set as default. And it will do the same thing as what we did over here. <coughs> need that hydrate where's the toxicity unsubbed unfollow sorry dave we'll probably have if, if no one joins and we don't set anybody's up don't you worry we'll get into some games we will get into some games i do want to play some more sky man she was fun right right now i'm f you man yeah there it is there's your toxicity all right so we've now told windows that voice meter is in control of all of our sounds well we need to control our sound out so where's the music and where's the sound going to come from we want it to go to our headphones or our speakers so one of the two so we're going to turn those on first a1 is the most important right remember i told you don't worry about all of these things just yet why are there four versions of everything they're just different audio formats and you may not even see all of these on yours if you use it it depends on the hardware you have depends on the software that that hardware might require what is the difference? Ah, I'll, I'll explain that in two seconds. The KS, you want to use this if you can. It's the most recent and highest audio quality available. Um, the next would be WDM and then down the list from there. However, just know that whatever you use here, you want to try and keep it the same on any of the inputs if you can. If you can't, don't worry about it. But if you can keep it the same, try to. We'll come back to that later. So this AAW Alienware 988 game is my headphone. So that's my output. That's where my speakers are. So that's A1 is set to that. So if I changed it, I wouldn't hear anything. I'm going to set this back to normal, which is how you would see it. <coughs> All right. So what's the difference between voice meter potato and the other version? Nothing. <laughs> Literally nothing functionality wise. The, the biggest difference is you get additional inputs and outputs. That's it. That's it. That's the only difference. So I went with potato because I want the maximum flexibility for scalability. Voice meter has two inputs and two outputs. Voice meter banana, I think has three inputs and two outputs and voice or three outputs. And voice meter potato has five inputs, five outputs, three virtual outputs. So Voice meter potato is the most flexible and they're all the same price. They're all free. They are all absolutely free. And I like free. So now that we have our headphones connected, you should hear sound out of them when you've done that. Now, if you don't try going up to WDM and, and if that doesn't work, try one of these down here, the MME, but KS would be preferred. I could go for a potato. I like potatoes. I like French fries too. So now the next thing you do, if you have speakers, you can set that on a two, same thing. Now notice I don't have KS for my speakers. Why? My speakers don't support it. So they're coming out of my monitor. It's just some cheapo scepter C 27. However, I don't have the KS version. So I just went with the WDM and it worked fine. 
and that's it and it's currently muted so if audio comes out so if i turn my music on which i just did literally i just turned my background music same background music that you hear on the stream i am now listening to it if i don't want to have that monitor on i can just hit that and it's now no longer playing in my headphones simple simple i'll show you guys how to do that in just a little bit but for ne the next thing we have to do is set up our microphone so we go all the way back over here this is where all of the magic happens this is where it becomes a streaming tool on the left hand side this is a hardware input if you click on the top you can select your hardware or your microphone i highly recommend putting the microphone first it's just easy to manage and i have my yeti nano here now i have wdm for my yeti nano however something to consider is that the audio quality of a microphone is not exactly the same for input versus output. I'm a potato. We're all potatoes. Everybody sit down and grab a potato. Now, you can also rename these if you want by right clicking. Just a handy little thing because otherwise it'll just say hardware input. Once you've selected your mic, test it and make sure that you see these bars moving if you're talking into it. So if you look right here where my mouse is, every time I'm talking, this is adjusting with it and you can control the gain here notice how that went down pro tip right click it yep pro tip right click i like that yep pro tip well because you can't double click it it doesn't double click import gravity what's up wow i'm actually happy you're here because you're you're a, a music head so here once your microphone is connected it's not going anywhere so when you see it, when I do this, you probably won't hear me anymore. Now you should hear me. Because you have to send that audio somewhere. Remember what I said? Audio has to have a source. You heard that? <laughs> you made fun of Dirty Dave? Yeah, I wish I did. I should have. That would have been great. Audio has to have a source. It has to have a destination. And it has to have time to travel, right? Those are the, the components for audio. So I have mine going to B1. B1, all the way back over here, right down here. Let's go in here. Notice the correlation. Look at the visuals. This is how I know that my sound is coming from here and going all the way over here. And B1 is also going here to my desktop audio, which is voice meter VIO, virtual in out. So anything that is receiving audio, which is everything on my computer, tell them the fact, Grandpa Negan is now hearing my microphone so my desktop audio can now receive my microphone because i sent it there so that is huge for anyone in the streaming world now you may also notice that i have something set up on the second column right here and it's grayed out it's grayed out because i have it muted this is my rep web browser audio so when i stream I'll have my web browser up with the stream on so I can monitor it real time. But I don't want you guys to hear the echo. I, I didn't know some of you have probably heard echo from my stream or any stream to be for that matter. When you've seen it, if I unmute this, you're going to hear a little bit of an echo. There you go. That is the Chrome web browser audio. And I have this tied to one of those invisible pretend virtual cables. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that now. And then I'm going to show you and tie this up in a bow how to control this in the moment when you're streaming. So right now I've named this Chrome and it's set to Virtual Audio Cable A. Now when you download Voice Meter, it comes with a free one. It comes with a VB cable. VB hyphen cable. Mine is disabled because I've, I've donated to them and I've gotten four additional cables because I wanted to use them for other things. And I'm using VB cable A here, and I have it set up to go to Chrome. But how do you do that? How do you get audio separated like that? Well, it's actually quite easy. So you come back, you right click your sound button down here, you open sound settings. So in the sound settings, there's an app volume and device preferences. How do I do that? You right click it, bro. You right click it. App volume and device preferences. So when you click on app volume and device preferences, you want to make sure that whatever application you want to manipulate has audio coming out of it at that moment. So if you want to manipulate Chrome, the web browser, 
make sure that it's playing music or playing audio or doing something like that. So right now my Google Chrome is playing audio because I have a Twitch uh, stream open and I have it set up to input output. Cable A is my input, which you can put as VB hyphen audio, which is the cable that comes with voice meter VB audio and the same matching VB audio. Now you can use any of these, but keep it simple. Make it easy for you. VB audio A. Now, because I've set that to A and I've set this hardware to cable A, whatever application goes to cable A is now controlled, excuse me, on this particular channel. Doesn't matter if it's Chrome. If I set Steam, Stream Avatars, Discord, it'll go there. Not gonna lie, this is really helpful from when I set up my new comp. Yeah, dude. And I'll do, I will do more of these gladly. I love this kind of stuff. This is fun. Lurking for a bit. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it, my dude. So right now I don't have anything set up on hardware input three, four, or five. I have in the past, but I've turned them off for now based on my needs. Um but I want to show you how to get all of this kind of put into the pizza as we did in the beginning before you put it in the oven. Because the middle right here, that's the oven. That's where you want to mix it all together. That's where all the sounds come together. We have to send it. So we sent our microphone audio over to B1, which is desktop audio. So this is B1, right? Now we have to send our Chrome audio or our, our uh, browser audio somewhere as well. Well, where am I sending that? Well, if I'm sitting at the desk and I don't have my headphones on, I want to send it to my speakers, right? That's A2. A2 is what? That's my speakers. So I'm sending it here. So this sound is going from A from here to here. And A1 as well. So it goes into my headphones. And if I unmute it, this you're going to hear an echo for a second. I just want to show you the visuals. I'm going to not repeat myself if I can move those levers Wiz. shut the hell up. Dude. I love you. <laughs> if you, if you look over here, you're going to look at channels a one and a two. You're going to see some differences in the levels here. Look at the visual effects when I unmute it. There you go. I try not to talk. So you didn't hear the echo. The visual effects are your validation that sound is moving. That is your validation. It's a spectralizer, so to speak. It's a very small one, but it actually shows you how many channels of audio are going to that area. Because it's going in stereo, you see two tiny little bars on each one of these. If you have, say, Dolby 5.1, you'll actually see six bars. Five plus the center. Pretty cool. 7.1, same thing. This supports all of that. It will see all of that. And you can even mute certain channels within those bars. It's a little bit more advanced, but you can. So if I wanted to send this to, I don't know, something else I have plugged in upstairs that's connected here, as long as I have it connected here on A3, 4, or 5, I can do that. Set it up to A5. Whatever I select here on my list for A5, that audio will go right to A5. So this is how you route your audio, how you move it. That's mixing. It's literally that simple. It's just a destination. You just need to tell it where to go. <coughs> there it is, Dirty Dave. We love you. But now, how do I separate the background music? Like why? You may notice in the middle, you see some like icons here. The background music is actually very simple too. There's one channel that we haven't touched on really is Bio 3. You can do whatever you want with it. I've reserved mine for the simplest application in the world, Windows Media Player. So its output is Bio 3. So all the background music that you guys hear on stream is coming right here from Windows Media Player. And all it is, all it is, a playlist that I have set up. Stream Beats playlist, and it's routed to go to Vio3, so it comes to this particular channel in the middle. Now, it's also going to desktop audio, but you cannot hear it because the output is only going here. So I don't hear it in my ears at all. I don't hear it through the speakers at all, 
unless I turn on this button right here, A1. I turn that off. Now I don't have it monitor on in my headphones any longer. So now I can focus on playing the game, talking to chat, messing around with OBS, doing whatever I need to do. So I don't actually have to monitor the beats any longer. Now, a lot of streamers don't do that. A lot of people will leave the music on, which is super distracting. I disagree with that concept. And being a former DJ, very hard for me to disagree with that concept because I like to hear both audio out here and different audio in here as a DJ. You hear what's coming and what's playing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, man. Back in the day. Um, however, when you have so much sound, <laughs> so much sound, DJ Wiz yesterday, nah, a long time ago, before digital, man, vinyl, vinyl, man. I had tech 1200s. I'm willing to bet Import Gravity remembers those expensive as vinyl turntables man the best around that's what i had but i never got into digital anyway anyway enough about that that was a long time ago you have to you have to listen to what's going on but you also can kind of tell what's going on sometimes by just looking at the visual cues so for me i want to know that windows media is playing but i also only need to look at this right here so what I'm looking at is the same spectralizer and it's minus 40 decibels from the zero. So it's not too loud right here. So it's going into VIO three. It's my windows media player, very lightweight app. I could use VLC. I could use any number of apps. You can use any number of applications. It doesn't matter. It could be Spotify. It doesn't matter. Whatever you use, you can send it here for background music. That simple. And that's really it. So just to kind of recap, this is easier than a VCR. It is making a pizza. You've got your bread, you've got your sauce, you've got your cheese and whatever toppings you select for the final outcome. And before you put it in the oven, which is right here, you have to figure out where the ingredients came from and where do you want them to go? And what ingredients are you selecting for this particular meal? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the bits, my dude. But it's really, it's really, really easy. It is so easy to do. The hardest part that people run into is what to do if something doesn't work and what to do when something doesn't sound right. And I think that not my doctor telling me to eat healthy. Oh God. Hot chips. <laughs> so there's two main, two main issues that happen, I think, with voice meter before people give up and walk away. The first issue is they can't even get sound where they expect sound. So they go back to the Windows default and it works again there. So they just walk away from it. And the second thing is maybe they do get sound, but it doesn't sound good. And I want to explain that a little bit. And it, this might actually get um, a little technical. So I'm going to do my best to use analogies where I can. In order to do that, I have to pull up a menu that can look a little overwhelming at first. So I'm just going to give you a fair warning. But in voice meter, there is a system settings options. And if you've ever opened it before, you've probably seen this and it looks a little crazy. But music sounds, they're all different frequency ranges. It's literally a frequency of noise. It's either high pitch or low pitch measured in Hertz all the way down from zero as high up as you can go as with the tools that we have currently. Now on this particular window, I don't want to explain this whole window and I have no intention of explaining this whole window, but what I'm going to teach you is that the biggest problem that I've seen online that people run into with voice meter sounding bad or sounding poorly, say they say they, they sound like a robot or they sound crackly. Things are staticky a hundred percent of the time. And it's not intermittent. It's a hundred percent of the time. And what that is, is the software. This is a, a software tool. It's not a hardware tool. So it's not actually mixing the audio sat like sound. It's, it's already mixed. It's already digital. It has to basically transcode the sounds, if you will, to put it in video terms. If it's trying to do that with different formats or different frequency ranges, 
you can get a myriad of results or a variety of results. And you don't want that. You want everything to come out the way that you expect it to come out. So if, for example, if you set your oven at 400 degrees and you put a pizza in for 10, for 10 minutes, you expect it to be as a pizza should be cooked at 10 minutes. You don't expect it to be burnt because 400 degrees should not burn a pizza. But what if it did get burnt? Well, that means something inside that oven is working way too hard at its job. It's working way too much trying to cook that pizza in that 10 minute range at 400 degrees. So what we have to do, turn it in. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd be pissed too, but that happens. That literally is what is happening when people hear crackly sounds. And I'm not gonna lie, it happened to me when I first did it. And then I figured it out. I learned, you know, where, where the problems were. And it's, it's the frequency ranges. So in the beginning of this, I shared that we need everything to line up and try to be matchy matchy as much as pos possible. And that goes with frequency ranges. So this says right here. So my input physical input here is microphone Yeti Nano. Input number two, cable A, three, four, and five are B, C, and D. My output is underneath. In this box, I have an output. That's my main one. This is the workhorse. This is the big one that does all of the work. This is the kitchen, the head chef. Alienware headset. This is what I'm wearing right now. Underneath are my speakers. And two cheapo speakers built into this monitor right in front of me, right? That is just explaining what you're reading. On the right of that, it tells you, is it on? Yes or no? On, 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 on. They're all on. They're all enabled. So Windows sees them. Add Alienware. Yeah, I wish. Too bad I don't get a commission. <laughs> now here, this is the important one. This is the important number right here. 48,000 hertz. 48,000 hertz. What if I changed my microphone to 44,000 hertz? That's the default in a lot of them. I'm going to show you. So... Back over to the sound window. Remember, I told you to keep keep it up. Don't change it. Mismatch. Yep. So microphone, sound profile. Remember, right click, pro tip, right click, sound settings. You can bring up this window here. Scroll down, sound control panel. That's going to bring up this one. You start here. Let's go to microphone. Recording. Microphone Yeti Nano. You're going to click properties. Just an overview here. General properties, just telling you a little bit about it. Listen, kind of want to turn this off. If you ever see Windows has this on for a microphone, turn it off. Windows shouldn't be listening to a microphone if you want voice meter to control it, okay? If voice meter is the boss, let voice meter be the boss. Don't have middlemen. Advanced. This is where you get to change the rate. 44,100 sample rate. That's the default on most equipment, most, but some now are shipping at 48,000. If you have a mismatch, you will get software that's working too hard to output its sound and crackly, crackly, nobody's happily. That was a bad, bad rhyme, but you get the idea. If I turn this down, what's going to happen is either in my ears or on stream or both, the crackle robot sound is going to happen. And it's not going to stop until I reset my sound settings. And I may even need to reboot the computer. It won't stop. Voice meter shutting down and rebooting the app isn't enough. It's that big of a deal because the sample rate actually controls what it's read at, at the core level of the, of the, uh, I guess the data that's going through the hardware. So the app alone isn't enough. That's why a reboot is usually required after doing any kind of sound changes. The app alone isn't enough. All right. That is that is the fix for the biggest issue, though. Making sure they're all the same. It doesn't matter if they're 44,000, by the way. You can keep them all at 44,100. That's fine. Keep the sample rate there. Or keep them at 48,000. But make sure they're all the same. Make sure every single one of these channels that you use is the same. That's key. If they're not the same, you're going to have that issue. And issue number two is 
double check that your your if you've done an update recently that voice meter is still set to the default so right click sound settings voice meter voice meter and it needs to be vio if you see that your microphone is now the default and real tech is here windows probably updated something recently and it it has a habit of doing that so please just double check it mine updates periodically and <coughs> every now and then i'll have to change it back not trolling can you go back to show how you open the sound thing yeah no 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 big deal so on this you should have the little sound icon down on your taskbar if you don't it might be in this little window here somewhere but right click that open sound settings then in the sound settings here there's two windows that i opened throughout the tutorial the first one was app volume and device preferences that brought you here and the second one is sound control panel that's this one <coughs> this is the big one this one changes everything this is essentially this in the raw windows form but it has a little bit more control you have, you have access to a little bit more information like the sample rates so that's that questions it was on the side yes it was on the side Oh, you have full screen. It was on the side, not scroll down. Got it. Yeah, some of these things are going to be in similar places for... But not in exact locations. Anybody have any questions? Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problemo. Can I have your snap? Um, That'll be 5,000 biddies. All right, so I want to share one more thing before I kind of move away from voice meter and take a quick get my water refilled break. Um, I'm going to actually close out of these. Oh, actually, I just need this. One. So a lot of people ask me, so you guys hear it all the time is like, what kind of mic do I use? Where do I get my mic or why does my mic sound so good? Mantis, if you use voice meter for mic, can you still use a noise gate? Bingo. Boom. Good question. I was actually about to show you guys that. So my microphone channel is here. So I'm actually going to move this over a little bit. So you can kind of see it in the center of the screen. So the microphone is here. This is where you can control your microphone. Now, I've personally shared that I don't use voice meter to equalize anything. I mean, actually, I just covered up the chat. My apologies. And I'll move it back a little bit. <coughs> I use a different application. However, you can. You can use voice meter. If you just want some simple controls, you can use voice meter to control some different aspects of your microphone. Noise gate being one of them. You have two big, big, big features on here that they're actually pretty decent for free donationware. This one right here on the left, these two circles are what I'm talking about where it says audibility. Compressor and noise gate. The compressor is on the left, noise gate is on the right. So the noise gate, what a noise gate is, before we go kind of go talking all over, what a noise gate is, is simply this. Think of it like a water pipe. And as water throw, comes through the pipe, it will only open a gate to let water in if a certain amount of water hits that gate. If it's not a certain amount of water, it won't open. Same thing is applied here. It's literally what it does. So think of it as volume level. So if the volume level of said sound is high enough, the gate opens and then the microphone turns on. If it's not high enough, it won't hear anything. So kids in the background screaming, it might hear them, but if they're really loud, it'll turn on the microphone. If they're not loud, but you can hear them, it might not activate. The key thing to know about a noise gate is once it activates, it doesn't shut them up. They're still going on. Those little shits are going on in the background. <laughs> they're still talking. They're still yammering back there. The dogs are still barking. But the way to operate it is very simple. Up and down. You click and hold. And you're going to want to adjust this 
two, I would start probably around like 2.5 to three and see what you get. This is a multiplier. So essentially to keep it simple, this is going to be three times the sound of, or three, three times the sound of the input essentially down. So if something that's coming in is 30 decibels, it has to be higher than, um, I think it's 10, if I'm not mistaken, <coughs> in order for the microphone to turn on. Make sense? One, if it's at one, it'll be just about exact. And then you have like thresholds of just a little bit below that. Now, I don't use this because there's more precise ways of doing it, but this is a very simple one. And it works fairly well. Keyboard typing, this is a good way to get rid of it. Fans in the background, good way to get rid of it. Kids yelling, most of it. Now compressor, this is how you can kind of get rid of those sounds that you don't want while you're talking. This will compress the sound down to make it a little bit more bearable. It won't remove it, but it'll change the way that it sounds to your audience. So same concept, it's literally just a wheel. You can use this to compress sounds that might be uncomfortable to hear or you just don't want people to hear them as the primary source and as you're listening to them make sure that you hear yourself in the monitor just adjust this up a little bit more a little bit more make sure it's not too much a little goes a long way with both of these so try them see how you feel now for some fun ever want to mess with your voice make yourself sound like a podcaster you can do that all you need to do is take this little square right here and move it right there. Oh yeah, right there. Or you can make your sound have like a really high voice like this. Oh my God. <laughs> and echo, I should be echoing right now. I don't even know if I am. Now I wanna hear myself about echo, echo. You get the idea. So that is IntelliPan. The way to understand this square, most uh, DJs will recognize this square, but low end, high end frequency. So it'll make your voice sound higher, lower than what it is by default. The square down on the bottom is default location. Here, bringing it up, brings up the, uh, what is it called? I want to say tempo, but it's not tempo. Ah, what's the word? It's more, it's more, it's more like your mid tones, but, uh, it's like the pitch, the higher pitch here. Like, so this is going to be your voice. This is going to be like the medium tones, but if you bring it here, like on this end, it's going to sound really weird. Bird is the word. This is echo. This whole upper left quadrant is adding like another layer onto your voice. It's not like a repeater. It's not repeating the words that you say. But it's adding another like moist visualization behind the audio sound. Play with it. See what sounds good to you. But make sure you record it and don't just listen to it in your ears because it, it you sound funny when you talk to yourself in your ears. And then you find yourself talking slower because you're listening at the same time. It's just really weird. Very allo sound. Very allo. Yes, allo. Gotta say it like you're British, mate. Now, there's some other effects on here. I'm not going to get too much into them, but I wanted to share what these are because at the base level, at the base level, voice meter banana and voice meter potato have these. So use them. I don't, I think the regular voice meter even has this one too. What does the lower left sound like? Like this, baby. It sounds like this. I'm talking normal right now. I have no idea what it sounds like. Probably really deep and like tony. I can't. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That's better. <laughs> yeah. So you get the idea. You can play with the sound, figure out what you like. Again, I don't use this for my equalization. I prefer to have more control over it. But if you just want something very simple that gives you a lot of flexibility, try it. You'll probably like it. All right, so just to recap, starting in the beginning, today we learned how to make a pizza. We got our dough, we got our sauce, we got our cheese, we got our ingredients, 
and we figured out where the oven was and what we were going to put in the oven. And all of this is all the ingredients and the pizza oven is the audio output or the mixed sound, which is essentially your stream. What you're going to get, what your viewers will see, the microphone audio, the desktop audio, the background music, the game audio, discord audio, all of that. All of these things can be routed any way you want. Hardware in over here, microphone. I recommend that one being first. Any other hardware inputs you want. So if you have other things like a guitar, like, uh, oh, I don't know. Literally anything that has an audio output that can plug into your computer. Anything that's making music or making sound, a keyboard, whatever. Any one of these can receive that information. Hardware output, so your, your primary would be A1. Whatever your most used and best quality is, your workhorse, the captain, if you will, should be an A1 all the time. A2 through 5, any other audio output, speakers, other headphones, whatever. <clears throat> the oven. Vio. Voice meter aux and Vio 3. So voice meter Vio, voice meter aux, and voice voice meter Vio 3 all correlate to the default settings which we set in sound. So voice meter controls the entire audio on our computer. Desktop audio is pretty much everything by default. So any game I install, any app that I install, unless I change it in the sound preferences, it's going here by default. It's going right here. And the way that it gets there is because I have it set up here in the sounds preferences as the default. So that's that. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? I'm going to take a quick break and I will take your question. So uno momento while I uh, walk away and refill my water. I'm excited to rewatch this and set up my voice meter. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, dude, no problem. Absolutely. Voice meter banana only has two B ports. Do I need to download the virtual cable? You should get the virtual cable. One of them is available for free. Yes, it's a VB cable, VB cable. But I also highly recommend just downloading potato because if you start with one of them eventually and you keep it, you're going to want to upgrade to potato anyway. And they're all the same. They're literally all the same. They're all exactly the same. The only difference is the inputs and outputs. It has, Potato has more. They're all using the same exact engine. They do exactly the same things. But I highly recommend figuring out whether or not you can, or not figuring out, just going ahead and getting Potato. If you're gonna jump in, just jump into the deep end. It's not harder, it's just bigger. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> oh man oh how was work today mantis i like my new billboard i think i'm gonna use this for advertisements in the future what do you guys think i'm gonna sell the ad space and have it on my skyline in the background blind creeper will always pay double though <laughs> put anything I want in here. It's good. It's not harder. It's just bigger whiz. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I. <laughs> oh man. That's the quote of the day right there. We should just end the stream right there with that one. Yep. 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 After this morning's events, I can't even like, I don't even know what I'm thinking anymore. Whew. 
before I kind of move on to changing the name of the stream and all that, does anyone want me to go over anything else with voice meter who is currently here? Cause I'm about to switch over to some Val probably if not. I'm going to open Val while I wait. I'm good. This has been helpful. Awesome, dude. Thank you. I'm glad. I will put, I will upload this to probably YouTube as well. Just so it's available in multiple platforms. Ah! Appreciate it. That looks so cool like that. I like that. 